questions in a certain order. And I'm just going to put some blanks up here on the board. And we're going to call the first item A sub 1. I'm saying sub, S-U-B. And then the second item is going to be A sub 2, because that's the second place in the sequence. And then A sub 3, A sub 4, A sub 5. And then I'm going to skip some space, and I'm going to call this term A sub n. And the three dots here at the end imply that this is what kind of sequence? An infinite sequence. We don't have the three dots on the end. It's not infinite, which is very nice. So A sub 1 represents the first term. A sub 2, the second term, the third term, the fourth term. That's what position they are in the sequence. And so let's write one out here. I'm going to say 3, 5, 7, 9. Can you predict the next one? 11. And if I wanted to find out what A sub n was, we could talk about what kind of sequence this really is. This is a special kind of sequence. not geometric, it's arithmetic, right, because it has because it has a common difference, yes. And the common difference is referred to as B, but in this case it's 2. spot number two. How do I get from spot number one if I'm arithmetic? A sub one plus B. Spot number three. What do I do? I just add another B, correct? A sub one plus B plus B. Fourth spot, I would say A sub one plus B plus B plus B. Anybody notice pattern? If I can, I jump now to A sub N. One plus yeah, n minus one times b. This is the nth term. are not continuous, they are discrete, meaning they have spaces in between each one of their numbers. Um, and not unlike the equation of the line, each sequence has a specific starting spot and a specific common difference. So you would have to have both of those filled out and n would not be filled out. And if I were to be able to tell you what n was, could you tell me position. I mean, if I tell you the position, could you tell me what this, the number is in that position? The answer is yes. That's why we call it the generic term. So for this sequence up here, what would a sub n be? a sub 1, which is? I'm going to put it in green. 3 plus an n minus 1 times 2. And we could simplify that, but I'm going to leave it like that. So that's a sub n. this arithmetic sequence. 
And you could find a of one, a sub one hundred, a sub one thousand. Okay. Now the domain on sequences. They are all integers, right? They're counting numbers because you can't be at the one half spot. And the range is whatever your specific numbers are, the span of your numbers. Okay? Um, this is, this bounds term is what we call explicitly defined. Tell me exactly, explicitly what that spot, that number in that spot is. There's another way you can define a sequence, and it's called recursively. Recursively defined means you are defining your sequence based on the terms that went before it. And that would be a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus b in this case. Where a sub n minus 1 just happens to be, oops, happens to be what? The, the previous term. If we were going to define our sequence up here that I have, this arithmetic one, recursively, how could we define it? We could say a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus 2. Now, the, the flaw, or at least that I feel with uh, recursively defined, is that you're only going to be as good as the terms that are near you. So if you wanted a sub 100, it's going to be a little difficult to find. Uh, if it's recursively defined. Um, but I just wanted you to be aware of that. Right? So let's uh, see if we have the ability to pick up some that are arithmetic and some that may not be. Okay, so I'm going to write some down. is over here, so maybe I'm mumbling and I don't know. This is for Catherine. All right. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 4, negative 8, negative 16, dot, dot, dot. in a sequence. Could you give me the next several? I believe you could, so I'm not going to bother you with that. Let's say we are given a 
Lisa Ben. A sub n equals negative 10 plus 2n. Find the first three terms of the sequence and the 50th. Now this one appears to be arithmetic, okay? So this would be A, and we're going to have the same instructions for this one. This one's going to be A sub n equals n squared plus 1. A sub 1, 2, A sub 2, 5, A sub 3. And then A sub 50, 25 O, all right, how about C? A sub N equals 1 half times 3 to the N minus 1. A sub 1. A sub 2, 3 halves. A sub 3, 9 halves. A sub 50, 3 to the 49th over 2. Enormously large. This one's not arithmetic. This one is not arithmetic. This one is geometric. We're going to talk about that in a second. We remember this a little bit. D. A sub n equals n over n plus 1. A sub 1. 1 half. A sub 2. Two-thirds, A sub three, Just following the pattern, A sub 50, oops, I'm delayed, how delayed are we? right? A sub 50. 50 over 50. Very nice. All right. I remember uh, solving systems with you guys where you had to find if I gave you certain terms, right? I'll just, I'll post, repost these notes so you can look at those when you're doing the homework. If that's all right with you, but I want to go on to geometric. The geometric are going to serve us well. See, geometric sequences are going to serve us well in uh, this unit. Geometric sequences, obviously they will have the same layout here. So 
let's do one that's a little bit different. Let's say ours is instead 3, 6, 12, 24, dot, 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 dot. This one we call geometric because instead of a common difference, it has a common, common ratio. And we use the common ratio letter is R here. And to find that, what do we do? We say R equals A sub 2 over A sub 1 has to equal A sub 3 over A sub 2. It's the ratio of, the, of two of the terms. And it has to be the term on top, it has to be uh, the first term, and then the term before it has to be on the bottom. Okay? And they all have to be equal. And you could go through the first eight here, and they'd be equal, and then when, when the, you have the ninth, Like you could do the comparison for the first eight in a row and they'd be the same and then to the ninth one and you're busted. Okay? So they must all be equal. In this case, does everybody see that the ratio is two? Okay. And the, yeah, the common ratio is two. So how do we do this generically? If I'm in the first position, this is going to be a sub 1 equals a sub 1. Then it's going to be the second position will be a sub 1 times r. The third position would be a sub 1 times r times r. Next one, a sub 4 is going to be a sub 1 r times r times r. And to the a sub n here, we can say that's going to be a sub 1 r to the n minus 1. And this is the explicit defined nth term for a geometric. sequence up here, what is a sub 1? It's 3, and it's going to be times 2 to the n minus 1. That'll be our nth term here. Now you guys are smart enough to know that you cannot multiply those together because they are not the same face. really important. I like the explicitly defined method because when you look at this, do you know what the first term was? It's 3. And you see R right away, which is nice. And similarly to the uh, arithmetic formula, you have to have A sub 1 filled out and you must have R filled out because that is specific to each sequence. And if we were going to define it recursively, which means we're basing it on the, team, the term before it, it would be a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 times r. I do. It's interesting, isn't it? Maybe I'm wishing I could write in cursive. Okay. Now the one I, the, the the geometric sequence I have up here is what we call divergent. What could I possibly mean by that? It cannot be controlled. Yeah. <laughs> cannot be controlled. It, this this sequence of numbers goes to infinity. 
All right, you can have sequences that are divergent or convergent. sequence, the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n is plus, plus or minus infinity. For a convergent sequence, the limit as n goes to infinity, and n is obviously the number of terms, of a sub n is equal to, I'm going to call it L. This is a number. A sequence can converge to a number. Okay. Uh, let's do a geometric that converges to a number. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. converges to zero. And we can say then therefore a sub n is converging. Converging to zero. So all that means is that the numbers in the sequence are getting closer and closer and closer to zero. And I, in the past, did some solving with you, where you did have a certain number of terms and you could figure out what the terms were. I'll post these notes, like I said, again, online, okay? Well, a list of numbers is boring, unless you can add them up, right? Here's my right. So we define that as a series. Which is nothing but a sum of a sequence. You can have a finite sum and an infinite sum, believe it or not. I, I know I told the story of uh, we figure out that Pascal was a bad student. The teacher was mad and said, go to the corner and count all the numbers from, or add up all the numbers from 1 to 100. And Pascal was back in like a minute. It was the right answer. And what he did was he saw the pattern. I'm just going to, you know, these are the ones, numbers from 1 to 100. second to last one and got 101. And then the third one and the third to the last and got 101. So we notice with arithmetic that there was a pattern. And he said all you had to do for the sum of the first 100 was add a sub 1 and a sub 100 and, mul and then multiply it by the number of pairs. Well, how many pairs do we have? 
So what is that going to be? It's going to be n over, what would it be? It would be 100. Sorry, 100 over 2. So let's write that down. So we get 50 times uh, 1 plus 100. And the sum of the first 100 integers is going to be 50 times uh, 101, which is just 5,050. So what's the generic formula then? S sub n equals the number of terms over 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub n. You add the first and the last. That's one form of an arithmetic. Now let's talk about, can you, can you add up a, an infinite arithmetic? Infinite arithmetic, no. No, that's okay. No. You can't because the numbers are going to, you know, you're just going to keep adding and adding and adding or subtracting, 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 and you're never going to reach a number. Now there's another form for this because do I have a formula using the nth term for this a sub n? So I could say this is n over 2 times a sub 1 plus, well, what is a sub n? It's equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. And we could simplify that to n over 2 times 2 a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So you don't necessarily have to know the last term in that one. terms here. I'm not going to derive this because I want to get to the calculator and do some other stuff. But this, this formula is a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. And we call this a series, right? Because sum of a geometric sequence. This is a finite. With geometric sequences and geometric series, what's really unique about them is if you can uh, have a special case here where r lies between negative 1 and 1, and you can add them all up. Now let's see why. Let's have the condition that we have an infinite uh, series, meaning we have an infinite number of terms, and we have absolute value of r is less than 1. What kind of number is that? That's a fraction, isn't it? That's less than 1, like 1 half, 1 fourth. Let's say I let then that I'm going to let n go to, the number of terms goes to infinity. So I take the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum of n numbers, and then we're going to say that equals the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub 1, 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. 
Now what happens when you raise one half to the infinity? It goes to zero. And so the formula for an infinite sum then is, if this goes to zero, this part of it, it's going to be a sub 1 over a sub 1 over 1 minus r. Looks too much like an integral symbol. I'm going crazy. So some folks have trouble with the fact that we're going to be adding up infinitely many numbers and getting an answer. This only works if and only if absolute value of r is less than 1. So let's add up our sequence that we uh, had before. And I'm going to use summation notation from n equals 1 to infinity. Sarah, you made up it was 4, and then Jake said it was 1 half to the n minus 1. And I want to sum them all using uh, sigma notation. First of all, is this a geometric? Yes. Is the absolute value of r less than 1? Yes, because r here is 1 half. So what is a sub 1 in this case? We have to plug in 1 and we get 4 over 1 minus well, what's r here? 1 half, so this is going to be 4 over 1 half, or 8. Yes, sir? It's shorthand. Sigma notation is shorthand for uh, writing all the terms out. And you put the nth term right here. If I were going to do, let's say, the sum from i equals uh, 1 to 5, we'll, we'll do a shortcut here, of 3i plus 1. What does this do? This is the counter, the lower limit of summation. So you're going to go 1. When 1 goes in here and you get 4 plus, bump the counter up to 2. 6 plus 1 is 7 plus, bump the counter up to 3. 10. Bump the counter up to 4. Bump the counter up to 5. 16. It's just shorthand for writing out a list of numbers, or sum of numbers. All right. Would you believe, of course you would, 0.9 repeating is actually a geometric series. How could we write this? Could we say that this is 0.9 plus 0.09 plus 0.009 plus dot, dot, dot? Well, what is this in, uh, this is decimal form. What is it in fraction form? This, so this is 9 tenths plus 9 one hundredths plus 9 one thousandths, oops, I can't write, plus dot, dot, dot. Is there a shortcut way to write that? First of all, what's R? One tenth. So R equals one tenth. What's A sub one? Nine tenths. So could we write this as a sum from n equals 1 to infinity of, what's a sub 1? 9 tenths times 1 tenth to the n minus 1. that 0.9 
49 repeating is an infinite, I mean, it has infinitely many nines, right? Going on. This here is an infinite series, isn't it? Infinite geometric. Is there a formula for this? Gregory, recall our formula is of infinite many. A sub 1 over 1 minus r. What's a sub 1? 9 tenths over 1 minus 1 tenth. sequence mode? Mm -hmm. All right, so what we're going to do is have our calculator actually plot this sequence here. It's alternating. Why is it alternating? Because it's negative 1 to the n. So it's going to alternate from positive to negative. And so when we go to y equals, we're going to jump di diamond y equals, uh-oh, what has appeared? U, hasn't it? Okay, so u sub 1 is your sequence. F A sub N, basically. So, where do we find N? Alpha 6. Alpha 6. All right, so we're going to type this in. Everybody got that? Negative 1 to the N times, you got to use the times here, N minus 1 over N. And then you've got this uh, under here that says u sub i 1. What does that mean, do you suppose? Uh, it's your initial point, right? Use the alpha key to find the letter n. We're going to leave this blank for implicitly defined functions, explicitly defined functions, because you're going to use this with recursive. Because how would you define it? You go u sub n minus 1 times. Anyway, we'll do a recursive in a minute. Here we go. And we're going to go diamond window. Let's change our window to, now you're going to see n min, and we're going to start with the first term. And then we're going to have a max of 20 terms. And we're going to have our uh, plot start on 1 and have our plot step of 1. Right? Because we want to have our sequence going in increments of 1. And then we're going to go from 0 to 20 in the x min and x max, and then this y, x scale is 5, y min negative 2, y max 2, and the y scale will make 1. Everybody got their window? What? Huh? Oh, you graphed it already? And then we're going to go diamond graph. You should look like this. Can you tell me whether this is convergent or divergent? Or 
It's divergent. Why? Is it zooming out on one number? No. This is another way a graph, a sequence could be uh, divergent. Everybody get the point? You see how these are discrete? They're not connected? And it's alternating? Because we're going from, obviously this is zero, then plus, minus, plus, minus. So let's do a Fibonacci. That's a famous sequence by Fibonacci, where it's uh, defined as one, one. You have two terms, one, one, and then the next term is by adding those two terms together. So the next term would be two, and then the next term would be after that, three, and then five. five, right, that's a Fibonacci. So let's go to y equals again. And it's the sub now, when we're talking about being recursively defined, is going to be in parentheses, because there's no mechanism for us to go sub. So you're going to go u1, n minus 2, which is the second term, and then plus u sub 1, n minus 1. And this is where it gets a little bit interesting here. You have to give it a set of 1, 1, because this one is based recursively on the 2 that went before. Okay? You have to enter the initial values separated by a comma, even though you don't see the comma. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't program the, the calculator, but... Everybody got that? Do we know how to find the curly braces? One comma one. You have to have the comma even though you don't see it. Okay? Then let's go diamond window. And let's just uh, fix our window a little bit. Let's go from one to ten terms and then change x min to zero, x max to ten y min to four, uh, 0 and then y max to 40. And then let's do y scale in increments of 5. y scale in, in increments of 5. And then go diamond graph. And there is a picture of Fibonacci. And you can trace it to, to do the, the steps. So you hit F3 trace. So we started at, well, I, I want, what was the first term? It was one, one, and then when you use the right arrow, does it hop over for you and tell you what the terms are? We said one, one, three, five, eight. Is it hopping for you? We're going slowly today. Okay. And uh, let's say we want to if go to diamond table set and then start our table at one in increments of one, and that will also give you uh, the, the sequence. If you go diamond table after that, you'll see that it's one, one, two, three, five, and you can scroll down and get the rest of the terms. And you notice that your table has an n, u sub 1, so it gives you the sequences. Okay. Scroll down to see more values. So you can find whether a sequence converges. I, I talked about that a minute ago. Does this one converge? What's the limit as n goes to infinity? Two. two. You're right. Converges to two. And I would just divide it into each. You don't need to see that, right? Absolute value theorem for sequences. If your sequence, if the absolute value of its terms go to zero, then if it alternates, it will also converge. You know, when you're done with sequences, you want to change your mode back. Okay? And that's it. That's all I have for today. Can you put this on the table?
Yeah, I'll put this on a little. Sure. Okay, I'm done a little bit early.